Hey guys, all right, so now we're ready to move into making our buttons. Uh, remember, I'm not going to let you produce your buttons until all the work is done, including the ePortfolio. And you must have a two on that ePortfolio before we actually print off your buttons and we make them. We're going to make four of them. You get two free, and if you want more than the two that are free, it will cost you 50 cents per button. All right, let's go and get started. You want to make sure that you're in print because we will print these off. Make sure you're in inches, landscape, and create. Okay, I'm going to get control R. I'm going to get my rulers out. There we go. And then I'm going to divide my paper in quadrants. Five and a half there, four and a quarter here, and now I have it divided out into four equal parts. I want to see your guidelines, so I want to see these lines, you must have them. Now, making our buttons, we're going to use the ellipse tool, and instead of clicking and dragging, what we're going to do on this is we're just going to simply click and then this box will open up and we need to make two circles we need to make one that is 3.25 by 3.25 and then I'll grab it and bring it up here I'll give it a stroke and there I have my first one and I'm going to go back to my lift tool and I'm going to make one that is 3 by 3 Enter, hit my B, and I'm going to bring this until it, I see the word center. There it is. And now I have my two rings for my buttons. All right, so ask yourself, one of the things I want you guys to learn is why do you think I have this distance right here uh, between the small and the large? All right, ask yourself that question. Why do I need it? Why do I have it? All right, so I'm just going to select them. I'm going to group them. And now we can go ahead and oops, duplicate four of them. All right, got my four. Now I'm ready to bring in some images. So let's go to File, replace this one. And you can see that it's really, really big. I'm just going to size this down. Like so. A little bit more. Okay. First, I'm going to embed my image. Very important. Do not forget to embed your image. Then I'm going to hit Z. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I'm going to see the quality of it. And it's pretty good, actually. I don't really feel like I need to go up and image trace it. I could if I if I wanted to, but it's it's not pixelated it's not that bad so I'm just going to leave it okay I am going to size it down just a little bit more there we go so I can see the top okay something like that and then I have to right click I have to arrange I have to send it to the back now you can see that my button is on top I'm going to select everything and then we're going to make a clipping mask okay so now it goes into my clipping mask. Notice that I lost my uh, my stroke on the outside. I want to make sure that the stroke is to the front, and then you can just kind of come up here and hit black. Okay, make sure you need this ring, right? It's it's very important to have that ring. Okay. So I guess I'm going to pause this real quick, and I'll be right back. Hey okay, guys, sorry about that. I'm back. So now, this one. Notice that when I hover, I see the really big rectangle. What that tells me is that I'm editing the picture. Okay, so let's say I have this picture, but I don't have quite the image in my button area that I would like. I can click on that, and I can move it around with inside my button, okay, without moving the button, okay? 
maybe you guys, you know, and you can do other things with it. Maybe you want to lower the opacity to it, something like this. And then I could bring in another image on top of it and have like a watermark with some, you know, either text or a number or something like this. So there's a lot of things that you guys can do to your button. So be, be creative. Okay. Oops. I'm going to go to file. Place. And I'll bring in this image here. Not a really big image. I got my image again. I'm going to embed it. I'm going to right click the range. I'm going to send it to the back. My buttons are on top. It's very, very important to make sure that your buttons are on top. Select it. I can copy mask. Okay, again, you see how this my outline went away. Let's just go ahead and select it. Make sure that your stroke is to the front. And now we have a stroke. Okay, and now you can see how my image, my picture here didn't go all the way to the bottom so first I'm going to move it around so this is Nola and I this is my dog we had her for 13 and a half years lost her last April so definitely miss her but what I could do is I could either expand the picture so I could undo my clipping mask And I could expand it a little bit bigger. Oh, look down on the image. There we go. Dang it. And try to get that to fit in there a little bit better. You can also color the background. So maybe it's one of those deals where you want to ungroup. And you want to come in here. Maybe you do want to give it a fill. Okay. Maybe you want to give it a background on your, your picture or whatever it is that you're doing. I'll do one more for you guys. this and see what I'm going to be able to get into my image right that looks pretty good right there looks like it's covering up everything and if I can get everybody in there I'm going to right click arrange and send that to the back I select the two and I'm going to click the mask okay so this is a, a picture in Poland my family we went there a couple years ago so my son could see their grandparents and that's how you can do that and again guys if I have something in that photo that I don't like if I want to move it around okay, I could do so I could just move it around inside that image until I get the look that I'm that I'm looking for okay all right guys well let me know if you have any questions but this is what you need to do in order to make your personal buttons all right see ya